not sponsored, by the way. Just so we're clear. So this is a camera that a lot of people have asked me to review, and people have been asking for a long time. Sorry it took longer than the entire history of humanity. Anyway, my dear friends over at Lomography were nice enough to hook me up with a loner Lomography Diana Instant Square. But allow me to give you the too long didn't watch version of this video. They're not paying me, and I can say whatever I want about the camera. But I like the loner camera so much that uh, I decided it wasn't going back to Lomography. I, I bought it. I, I bought the loner. <laughs> While it may not be the perfect instant camera, the things it does right, it does really right. I mean, what can I say? This camera can produce some really unique looking instant photos. I'm a huge fan of instant film photography, despite the price, and I can confidently say that this camera has replaced my Instax Square SQ6, which is another video I need to make, maybe in 2050 or something like that. But the Diana Instant Square holds a very special place in my collection of instant film cameras. It just offers a very different experience from my other instant cameras. While my Polaroid Now or SQ6 are both very much point and shoot style cameras, the Diana Instant Square is very much, uh, not that. It's a full manual situation. You don't even have the option to go auto. Which in a way presents a philosophical dichotomy. On the one hand you're meant to be in control, you're setting the shutter speed, you're setting the aperture. But on the other hand you're expecting the lomography outcome, you're expecting those lo-fi unpredictable results. So it kind of is a little confusing almost. There are times where I feel like I'm in complete control of the camera. And then there are others where I look at the photo I just took and I just kind of say, Ew. Even in the most ideal setting, there's a bit of unpredictability with this camera. Regardless, you have to approach shooting on this camera with the mindset of being in control. So if that's not your cup of tea, this is not the camera for you. If you're looking for a point and shoot instant camera, this is basically the opposite of that. When you're shooting on this camera, you have to concern yourself with the aperture and the focus and the shutter speed. While these are very basic aspects of photography, in the wild and wacky world of instant photography, it kind of threw me off at the beginning. But once you get used to the focusing and the settings on the camera, you'll no doubt get some beautiful results. There's a certain look that you get when you're shooting on the Diana. Because you're using the Fujifilm Instax, I feel like the shots come out a little bit on the cooler side compared to Polaroid. But there's a mood, there's like a, a contrast, some of them have the vignette. It just has that lo-fi lomography look, you're either gonna love it or you're not. But the bottom line for me, shooting on the Lomo Diana Instant Square is a ton of fun despite some of the more fiddly and frustrating elements of the camera. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. But if you're anything like me, you'll fly through packs of film, which your inner creator is gonna love, but your wallet probably won't be too crazy about. The Lomography Diana Instant Square is part of Lomography's Diana family, and this particular camera was actually funded through Kickstarter. But there's all sorts of Dianas. There's some that take 120 film, some that take 110, there's some that take instant film, there's a bunch of them. I'm told that they're all functionally the same, they just use different films. So presumably my thoughts on the Diana Instant Square should be consistent with the rest of the Diana line. That said, I've only used the Instant Square and the 120 medium format regular Diana. These names are really messing me up. The Diana is a modular camera. It has interchangeable lenses and even a flash. It's a really unique system. And that means that if you end up getting an instant square and the 120 camera, let's say, you can swap the lenses between those two cameras. I was working with four lenses, but ironically, three of them were 75 millimeter. Two of the 75 millimeters were just the basic plastic lenses that come with the cameras. One was from the Diana instant, the other from the 120 camera. And the third one was the very special glass 75 millimeter lens. 
I also had the 110mm soft telephoto lens. Of the lot, the glass lens was hands down my favorite. You can get some really sharp, beautiful images through that lens. The soft telephoto, on the other hand, is my least favorite, mainly because the name is quite accurate. The thing is definitely as sharp as a halo, and I'm, I'm talking about like the little mandarin orange thing, not the classic first person shooter. I'm probably not the person you want driving. No, I'm just kidding, I'm a great driver. No, <laughs> no you're not. <laughs> the soft telephoto lens also gives you a very heavy vignette, which, hey, you might be into that look, but for me, I kind of want to shoot on the full frame, so not a huge fan of that. Fortunately, the vignetting is not as big of an issue on the glass lens. It's also not an issue at all if you, uh, like the vignetting. And I'm not sure if I'm correct about this, this is just personal experience speaking, but it seems like the vignetting gets more intense the closer you focus your subject, and this is regardless of what lens you're using. But if I'm being totally honest here, once I realized how sick the glass lens was, the telephoto lens kind of just went onto the shelf and uh, stayed there. I would have made a paperweight joke, but uh, I don't think it's heavy enough for that either. Sorry little buddy. And speaking of focusing, these are full manual lenses, so you'll have to use zone focusing. In terms of looks, the camera is, uh, it's, well, it's geometric. Is it a rhombus? Nope. I don't know, I just like that word. It's very boxy. But the look doesn't stop it from feeling good in the hands. It's got a decent enough chunk to hold on to. There's no hand grip, but it's still, it's covered in this grippy material, so it's fine. The whole thing is plastic. It's extremely lightweight, and it feels like a toy, which is kind of on par with a lot of the other Lomography cameras I've used. While it does feel sturdy enough, I don't think it would survive a fall down the stairs or onto concrete. I, I wouldn't drop it if I were you. And I'm happy to report, I haven't dropped mine yet. I know a lot of you are familiar with my track record, but this one's still going strong. The viewfinder is cool. It seems accurate enough. Keep in mind they do have specific viewfinders for each of the lenses to scale the field of view to give you a good idea of what you're shooting. I only have the one, which is designed for the 75mm lens though. That could also be part of the reason why I wasn't enjoying the telephoto lens as much because I was using a 75mm viewfinder with a 110mm lens, so not the most accurate. But it gives you a good enough idea of what your composition is going to look like so it works for me just remember it's a little piece of plastic that's sitting on the shoe you're not looking through the lens it's just there to give you an idea with that in mind there's always going to be that little margin of error there but i feel like that's kind of a point the lomography experience is more about the creating and less about the technical and i feel like you're either going to be about that life or you're not going to be about that life the diana instant square has some really unique features that some other instant film cameras don't have the multi-exposure mode is fun and it's super simple to use. You switch over to MX, you take as many photos as you want, and when you're done, switch it to on and it'll eject your photo. You can switch the aperture all the way over to pinhole mode and do a long pinhole exposure. That's really cool. But in my experience, it's not like the pinhole photography I've done with the cans. I made a whole video about that a long time ago. You can go check that out. Link is in the description below. This is going to sound like a, a real big brain thing to say, but the Instax film is very different from the photo paper I was using in the cans. Wow. The Instax film is ISO 800 so it's it's pretty easy to overexpose that for example I did a couple of shots where I left it out for like an hour or two and uh, yeah it's all white shorter exposures though for 10 15 minutes anything like that will work out and will give you some pretty interesting results you can also wedge this included plastic piece into the shutter to hold it open for longer exposures so you don't have to worry about holding the shutter down yourself or getting an external release cable. And while we're on the topic, let's talk a little bit about the shutter. The shutter is this little lever right here. All you have to do is press it down and that will fire off a shot. The shutter mirrors the classic Diana design and it's also present on a ton of older cameras. Keep in mind that this is a mechanical part, so if you press it down, whether the camera is on or off, the shutter will fire. And as you know, if you open the shutter, you are exposing that film. It's kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you can very easily mess up exposures, and in fact, I think this is why I've had some accidental double exposures. What it kind of looks like is the camera's jerking as I accidentally hit the shutter. It would be cool if there was a lock there. But on the other hand, if you're going for a really long exposure, let's say you're doing star trails or something like that, you don't have to worry about the batteries. You can leave the camera exposing overnight with the power turned off. 
And on the note of batteries, the camera uses four AAAs. But while we're on the topic of the levers and the shutter and all that fun stuff, let's talk a little bit about the use. You set your aperture with this lever on the bottom of the lens. You can get f150 for the pinhole setting, f32 for the sunny setting, f19 for partially cloudy, and f11 for cloudy. You can set your shutter speed using this lever on the top of the lens, and you'll either get one one hundredth of a second for the normal mode, or you can switch it over to bulb mode and have it last however long you want. In my experience, the aperture lever is mad fiddly. I've definitely knocked it out of position a few times and gotten shots that were either way underexposed or way overexposed. It seems like it's very easy to accidentally knock this thing into pinhole mode, which, you know, if you're going one one hundredth of a second with f-150, you're not gonna get much. The same can be said for the shutter speed lever, although it's not as big of a problem as the aperture. I really wish that these could have been more clicky and locked into place better. They just slide way too easily for me, especially if you just pull this camera out of your bag and try to shoot something in a hasty manner. You, uh, kind of can't do that. The on-off switch is clicky and satisfying. Thank God it's not like the aperture because that would have been, that would have been a big issue. When you switch it on, it illuminates the frame counter on the back. Green for the standard mode and it goes into yellow if you're using the multiple exposure mode. And it also turns yellow while it's printing. And I guess this is as good a time as any to mention the fact that the camera does have a little mirror on the front if you're taking selfies. Awesome. I've also had a few times where I've kept my Diana in my backpack and as I've pulled it out, the back door flipped open. Now this could be because this was a loner model. It's a little bit worn out. It's not a brand new one. You know, it's a little bit kind of broken in there, but that is certainly not ideal because you can very easily lose a frame that way. That was my theory, at least until I spoke to the old camera guy who is an awesome YouTube film photographer. Make sure you go check him out. Tell him I sent you. He has the same exact issue with his and his wasn't a loner camera that he bought from Lomography. He just supported the Kickstarter. So it's kind of like a Bethesda game. It's not a bug, it's a feature, you know? <laughs> the plastic latch on the back door is not my favorite part of the camera. It does work, it does function. I wish there was some sort of dedicated release button like the Polaroid now that just feels a lot better. With this camera, I feel like if you don't have fingernails, it's a pain in the ass to open that back. But that said, loading the film into this camera is really, really simple. So who is the Lomography Diana Instant Square for? Well, I don't think it's necessarily geared towards a casual shooter. I think the manual mode and the unpredictable nature of it might be frustrating for someone who's never really done this before. But for someone who loves experimenting with film, getting their hands really involved in a very tactile part of the process, and someone who's okay with spending a little bit of money on experimenting with negatives and not necessarily knowing 100% what the results are gonna be, this camera really does offer a lot. It's a ton of fun to use and it really presents a bunch of creative opportunities that other instant cameras don't. Booting up the Owen Wilson WoW rating system over here and I'm giving the Lomography Diana Instant Square 7 Owen Wilson WoWs out of 10. Wow! Alright guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. We are still going strong on 10k week. Hope you're enjoying it. And uh, by the time this video is going up, I hope you are enjoying Christmas. Have a beautiful Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, have a beautiful day. And before we get out of here, we gotta talk about the feature. This video's theme, of course, instant photography. And today's feature is gonna go to Firefly from the Discord of this moody cat photo wonderful work and that's gonna do it guys thank you so much and i will see you tomorrow bye bye like, like and subscribe, subscribe. to sweet little photography, photography. you're the man